Hi friends, welcome back to the Arun Sharma Mindworks channel and uh, I continue with this video, I continue the course on uh, prep strategies for uh, for CAT, CAT prep strategies uh, specifically focused on a year long preparation uh, module for CAT and uh, in today's video I am talking about uh, the most important section, a lot of you have been asking me for it, uh, data and predation and logical reasoning. So how do you prepare for DILR which is one of the critical uh, chapters one of the critical areas, most critical areas for quants, for your CAT prep and uh, as you know, uh, you should know, uh, DILR is actually the least scoring of the sections. So while in quants uh, and in verbal you get 60-65% score to get a 99 percentile, DI may 99 percentile happens at barely 40-45 percent score and yet, yet at the same time the toppers are, are still able to score uh, close to 70-80 percent of the total marks. So what is the blueprint behind behind getting to that point where you can actually dominate this section and score 70 percent marks if there are five sets you can solve three three and a half sets in a 40 minute framework or if it's a one hour exam uh, eight sets you can solve six sets plus or five five and a half sets you can solve a set in 10 minutes. So what is the, what is the core philosophy now please understand few things uh, there are three four things I want to talk to you about on, on DILR prep strategy. The first one of them is that when you talk about DILR prep don't look for portion, don't look for theory. There is none. LR method, you can still look for question types as portion, but but again, the question types, for example, LR may arrangement question type. Unlike a chapter like maths, where we, like averages, I can teach you average theory for two hours, I can't teach you theory in arrangements for more than five minutes. Because these are all experientially learned, learned topics. They are learned experientially. So while a couple of topics like games and tournaments might have some theory, uh, or or for that matter Venn diagram might have some theory otherwise mostly LR may be theory nahi hoga or DI may be theory nahi hoga. So your your preparation cannot be uh, theory dependent. Some teachers or some training systems take it take it bar chart pie chart kind of thing for by for uh, for uh, uh, for DI but again how long can you can you stick to bar chart as a chapter to study DI is evident from the fact that if I have a bar chart based question, and in the next page I write the same data in a table which can be done, a bar chart data can be put in a table. So does, does that question now become a table question? So what are you learning when you when you break it into a chapter, when you break a quants question, quants uh, chapter into a chapter, what do you do? When you are studying time speed distance, the processes required to solve a time speed distance question is different from when you are studying averages or for that matter when you are studying number systems, the processes required to solve a number system question is different. The theory required is different. So, if you break this way, that I have a chapter of bar chart and a chapter of pie chart, then I will put a chapter of table in a chapter. So, bar chart ka data in a table, then that question will be solved here. I keep the same, same questions. And here I will keep that question, which is the highest year and which is the highest percentage change between years, etc. I can ask you the same question on the table. So, are you process-wise different? Different? No. So if you're not process wise different, why should you break it into those chapters? It makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, when you start DI, maybe one week you can spend on bar charts to understand what bar charts are and to understand, to make sure that you can read them. But apart from that, at the graduate level, you really don't need much time to understand how to read bar charts and pie charts, right? So so the learning in DI is is starts from the experience in DI. And the typical learning philosophy, which which is something we follow at Mindworks also, that you need to watch around 50 to 70 sets and then you do 200 300 sets so essentially what happens is uh, is reasoning ka portion portion etc you can you can have a look from my book reasoning mein kareeb 8 chapters aate hain uh, cat mein uh, arrangements team selections uh, rankings puzzles uh, then you have got quantitative reasoning then you've got uh, venn diagram and network diagrams and uh, games and tournaments cubes and dice those are the chapters that you have in reasoning. So in each of these chapters, you need to get an experience of around 40 to 50 sets of solving. That's what you'll need to do in reasoning. And what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the experience, I'm talking about it during the input phase of your preparation. That means I'm not saying, I mean, I, I would put a June, July endpoint, specifically if you're in a one year, 10 month framework, at least of preparation, even a seven month, eight month framework of preparation, if you're starting even March, April, you can still look at finishing off in three, three and a half months, an experience of around 300 sets in reasoning. And, and why it is so, so important to experience uh, reasoning as well as DI 
is that what happens is when you do your first 20 questions on any question type or, or you do your first first 15 20 sets of questions you will see for every question throws up something something new either a new clue or a new data structure or a new kind of calculation in di etc but after you finish your first 20 30 40 sets you'll start realizing that it starts becoming repetitive the language in a di question becomes repetitive the language the clue in a reasoning question becomes repetitive the uh, the calculation becomes repetitive the data structure being becomes repetitive the the data presentation becomes rep representative so as i was telling a group of students in a, in a class of mine the other day that um, cat 2019 for example gave a uh, a pie chart uh, which was called a layered pie chart in which there are three layers now a lot of people got confused with how to read a layered pie chart because they've never seen anything like that now how many times my, my question is uh, to, to people preparing for CAD is how many times can a layered pie chart surprise you in your life once twice but not the third time so if you work it out ki kaise layered pie chart ko uh, uh, chahiye, so then after that there's no there's no issue on in terms of the data presentation ever in your life tumko 10 bar layered pie chart pe question aa jayega tum 10 bar solve kar loge so through these experiences what you are trying to do and that number is around 300 sets in 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 lr and you have to get to around 300 sets in di and di has to be broken into two parts logical di and traditional di so do do around 100 sets of traditional di which is mainly data extraction work and i'll talk about uh, I'll, I'll bring out a couple of more videos on this where we'll we'll break it into what you do for di and what do you do for lr separately so usme main detail mein explain kar dunga but broadly if i have to talk about it in one line traditional di is di which is mostly dependent on extracting data and putting it into formulas and calculating while logical di requires a lot of analysis and a lot of uh, processing from your side before you get to the answer so traditional DI and logical DI both have to be broken and both have to be done. Around 100 sets of traditional DI and around 200 sets of logical DI is what you should plan to finish uh, before July. And when you pick up these sets, obviously some sets will be difficult, some will be easy and you might not be able to solve all the sets. So there'll be a question seen and there'll be a question done. So this gap between question seen and question done is where your learning and your growth lies. And the first, first uh, uh, point of learning if you look look at the learning journey in di or lr is you you are starting off from a point where i, I can solve these kind of questions but i can't solve, solve those kind of questions after this journey of 300 to 400 sets where you where you get after the sets you can't solve ask a few few hints from people who help you with sets you can you could not solve and you you get through them and uh, after this journey you have to reach a point of of belief this is the belief part of the journey where you can tell yourself that now I think DILR, any question I will solve kar lunga. That, that, that internal confidence has to, you have to reach that point and then you start working on efficiencies. So July to September, November, you are still working on DILR but that's the second phase in which you are working through DILR through previous year questions and you are working in, on DILR also through your, uh, through your um, questions in your mocks. So if you take 40 mocks and if the mocks are one hour each, You'll get 300 sets of DILR there between July to November. And if you do the last 10 years of CAT and IFT and ZAT, ZAT mein to reasoning nahi aata hai, DI aayega. So you'll get another 50, 70, 100 sets, 100, maybe 150 sets of DILR in those exams. Uh, and, and that is another 500 sets which, uh, which completes your preparation. So 300 sets, 300 to 400 sets pre, pre your mock, mock test series and 400, 300, 400 sets in your mock test plus your previous your questions. That utne mein DILR seekho ke nahi to kabhi nahi seekho ke. And what will happen as I told you, the first 50 sets everything will seem completely new but then you will start seeing repetitions of things. Uh, how it repeats in LR and how it repeats in DI, I will bring, bring that to you in, in separate video on each of those sections. But that repetition is where uh, learning happens, ki, okay this is something I have done. This, time, this kind of thing I have, I have sorted earlier. So next time onwards, I should be better at doing this. And that's how you pick up the ILR. Right? So more on this on my interactive board. Uh, that's, that's what I wanted to talk about in this session. I hope you enjoyed this and you got something worthwhile out of this. And I'll keep coming back with you to you with more. Please do subscribe to the channel and do share the videos. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.